So following on from the previous video, um, I want to look through some of these slightly more interesting ones where we've got a range of values. Um, so for this first one, we want the probability of getting more than one but less than five. So let's make sure we can write this as an inequality first. So this is equal to the probability of x being greater than 1, so 1 is less than x, is less than 5. So this is the probability that x is more than 1, but less than 5. Now remember, we want to write these probabilities in the format of x being less than or equal to x. These are the sort that I can actually look up in the table at the back of the formula booklet or plug into the TI-82 stats to calculate. So I need them as a less than or equal to, which of course this isn't at the moment. So this is looking at greater than 1 but less than 5. So these are the ones that I want, 2, 3 and 4. And so I can work that out by saying, well, that's the probability of being 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4. These probabilities mean the same thing for this binomial distribution. So how can I calculate it? Well, I can calculate x is less than or equal to 4 because that gives me 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0. But it gives me the 0 and 1 which I don't want. So I'm going to subtract 1 and 0 by subtracting x is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so I get the 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0 from that probability and take away the first two that I don't want. So this is something I can now calculate because I can calculate each of those individually and then um, subtract one from the other. Let's look at the second one. The probability of at least one, but less than four. So I want at least one, so x can be equal to one, or greater than it, okay? I want at least one, but strictly less than four. So it's got to be less than four. So, if it's greater than or equal to one, but less than four, I'm looking at those three there. So that is equal to the probability of x being between 1 and 3, inclusive. So I can calculate that by finding the probability of x being less than or equal to 3, which will give me 3, 2, 1 and 0, and then subtract 0, so the probability of x being equal to 0. Okay, so you can see that as x is less than or equal to zero because I can, I can calculate that because the probability of x being less than or equal to zero is exactly the same as probability of x being equal to zero. These two are would be the same. Notice how for uh, if you're using the TI eighty two stats, then this will use the norm. Uh, sorry, the binom PDF rather than the CDF, but um, because we're doing equals. However, as I've said here, if you type in either, you should get exactly the same result. So, number three. The probability of getting more than zero, but at most three. So I want to be more than zero, but at most three, so that includes... 3. So this one is at more than 0, but at most 3. And so it's exactly the same probability that I had before in the previous example. So the probability of x being less than or equal to 3 take away the probability of x being 0. Okay, and that's how we deal with these more complicated wordy problems.